Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Base Coat Basics. I'm Chris Arpin, and we're here at the booth of Create Text Colors. And today we're going to talk about painting or refinishing a powder coated finish. Now we've been trying to do some videos and talk about different substrates and the proper way to prep and get ready for that. And a powder coated finish is very similar to an OEM uh, painted finish uh, in terms of what you have to do for prep. And the only difference is it is a bare to sand. It is very hard to sand, and that's kind of one of the attributes of powder coat. So really the prep is exactly the same, but you just have to be a little more methodical in your approach in how you sand or refine the scratches once you start working up to a paintable finish. Uh, so these were all wiped down. I'm going to get right into it and talk to you about what I did to prep. So I used a red scotch bright pad and what is called a scuff paste or a prep paste. Uh, the particular product that I used is a product from Presta. Uh, it's a company that makes a lot of buffing products as well. That's some of the uh, products, the compounds that I use from Presta. It's called scuff stuff. So it's an abrasive paste uh, and you just dip your scotch bright pad in water and a little bit of the paste and it helps really break down any kind of surface contamination that's stuck to the surface, especially with these wheels uh, being with their on a car, getting bombarded with road grime and grit and dirt. It's a nice way to break down any kind of surface contamination uh, before you start sanding. Because if you start sanding without cleaning that stuff off, what you're doing is actually grinding in all that contamination into the painted finish. And that's not something you want to do. Uh, it's nice because it's water-based. So it's a simple rinse with a little bit of water from a hose or a rag. And it's going to help clean all that off. So, red scotch pad and the scuff stuff first. And I did the faces of the wheels, I did the inner barrels, the inside of the wheel, the surface, made sure all of that was nice and clean. And then from there, I did an inspection basically and seeing what kind of damage or anything that was going on with the faces of the wheels to see if we had to repair any of that. So basically just a little bit of feathering uh, on some of the scratches on the surface. I did that with 220 and I brought that up to a 400 scratch. So I, again, I went over just the face because I'm not so much concerned with the inside of the wheel uh, because we're going to paint that black and I'll talk about the finish on that. So just the face, uh, making sure that it's really nice and, and even in terms of the, the tooth and what we talked about, but you have to be methodical to make sure that that 220 scratch that I started with is brought all the way up to a 400 scratch because again, it's just a harder surface to sand. So you really have to be paying attention to what it is that you're doing. So once that's all done, I gave this a, once just another rinse and I wiped this down actually with a water-based degreaser because it's a water-based uh, scuff paste that I use. It helps kind of break any uh, residue that was left behind, any of that sanding sludge. So the water-based cleaner, so that's a PPG product, the PPG uh, DX394, or actually SX394, that's the new version of it. Um, so water-based cleaner, wipe it all down, a nice clean lint-free cloth. And now we're going to talk about the finish. So you can see I have the outside of the wheel taped off and I have the inside of the, the wheel itself, the barrel or the, the hoop, the inside surface of the wheel is all taped off because all I'm worried about right now is the effect coat and the silver that we're going to put on the face of this wheel, the outside, what you really see. So for that, I'm using our 6013 Otterborn Silver Sealer. That's going to be a great base coat. Probably two coats is going to cover this and make everything nice and even. Once that's dry, I'm going to do an effect coat over the top with our Cosmic Sparkle Silver and just two light coats. And it's just going to give that a cool kind of shimmer, a little, uh, a little pop. And then what we're going to do is actually come back and smoke these wheels with our Candy 2O Black. So it's going to be a really cool effect and it's really simple to achieve. And then what we'll do is I'll flip these over after that's all dry and I'll black out the inside surface of this wheel. I'm not concerned about this outside part because this is, again, tires going around this. I'm just keeping overspray off. That's why it's taped off. The inside of the barrel is taped off as well. Again, because I'm not trying to get the silver on there because those are just going to get completely blacked out. And the only reason we're going to black them out is because it's inside the actual wheel surface. So when it's on the car, it's not super critical, but it's just going to be nice that it's black instead of silver when you look through the spokes. So I'm going to get this blown off, tacked off, and we'll see you guys in a minute and we'll start putting on our silver sealer. Hey guys, we are back. I got my wheel all wiped down. I wiped it down one more time with the uh, SX394, little tack rag. It's ready to spray. Uh, and I also have my little center cap to want to match this as well at the same time. I'm spraying it off the wheel just so I can get the edge of this and the edge of the inside lip of the wheel as well. So I got my handy little cup holder for my center cap. And I'm going to apply 
our silver sealer. I'm probably going to do two coats. It's going to be more than enough to get a nice, even, metallic look, cover all the uh, burn throughs and all those little issues. And I'm using my Iwata, my W400 WLVX uh, at 18 PSI. So a little bit lower than what they recommend. recommended max is 20. I'm spraying just a little bit below that because there's all kinds of little valleys in here and I want to make sure I don't have too much air pressure to blow all this around. So I'm going to go ahead and put my first coat on. Okay guys, we are back. Coat number one is dry. Uh, it's been about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, keep in mind though, we are in a controlled environment, so we're in a heated booth. It's right around 70 degrees, and we're actually about 55% humidity, which is really, really great in terms of paint conditions. Um, but just keep in mind, obviously, your dry times are gonna be influenced by the amount of airflow and, uh, and temperature. So we don't want hot, hot air. We just want warm air, but it's more air movement. So if you had a fan, that would help. If you're not in a booth, that, that you know, just air movement is what we want. So we are ready for coat number two. Coat number one actually looks fantastic. This Silva sealer does lay down incredibly nice. Uh, if you guys are watching, the way I was spraying, it kind of looks a little haphazard, but it's a little more of a, an approach just to feather in the lips. We got a lot of different areas here, and I just kind of want that wet overlap. So first coat was to get everything nice and even. The second coat was just going to make sure that I didn't miss anything because we do have all these edges. I'm going to apply it the exact same way. Same thing, I'm right around 18 PSI in my regulator. So it's just going to put a nice, even coat, not too wet. We want a medium wet coat of sealer. We're going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back and do our effect coat with our Cosmic Sparkle. So this is coat number two. Hey guys, welcome back. Coat number two is dry. It looks fantastic. That's all we're going to need for that. And now we're getting ready to put on our, our mid coat, this little effect coat of our Cosmic Sparkle Silver. So same application. I'm spraying at the same air pressure. I'm right around 18 PSI. And I am going to apply this the same way. I don't want to put a heavily wetted coat. I just want to put a nice medium coat. It's one coat. It's all it's going to take. And I'm just going to fog this on, almost like a drop coat if I was spraying metallics or something. Just a nice, even effect coat. You're not going to get coverage with anything with this because it's not designed for that. So I mixed this. Actually, uh, we'll talk about that too. Uh, three to one. So I did three parts Cosmic Silver to one part 4050. Our gloss, our UVLS gloss, we're finding that that works extremely well in carrying the met metallics and pearls and it helps with orientation and just a nice even film build. It gives a nice smooth slick surface that doesn't have a lot of grain to it so it's, it's a great surface to go over with your clear coat. You're not going to have to bury anything. So three to one and then 10% reduction with 4011. So let that sit for about five minutes after I mix it, about 10 minutes and uh, about the same amount of time it took for this to dry. This is totally dry, bone dry. Again, that is very important between coats that you have it totally flashed off. You want to be able to be dry to the touch. Uh, and it's going to just help with everything, the way your, your paint process goes. So I'm going to put one coat on here, get the rest of the wheels done, and we're going to let that sit for about an hour. And then we're going to come back and do our candy. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, we are back. It's been about an hour. Our wheels are nice and dry. Uh, everything is good to go. We give them a quick little tack before we started uh, spraying again, just to make sure there's no surface contamination on there. And now we are ready to spray our tint coat of our Candy 2O, our Candy Black. So 
If you guys are familiar with candy at all, um, it is a little more difficult to spray it than the average base coat or, or ground coat color uh, because it is that transparent. So it's very critical that you have your mix ratios dialed in and you're very comfortable with how you're going to spray in terms of your distance away from your panel or your, your substrate and how your overlap is. Now with candies you want to be 75% overlap so that means you are almost right on top of your overlap every time. You don't want to have a big space because that's going to give you these stripes. And if you start with a stripe or any kind of blotch in the candy, it's going to look that way throughout the entire project. You can't make that go away. You're not going to cover up a stripe. It's just going to keep getting darker and the area around that stripe is going to get lighter. So it is very critical that you have everything really dialed in in your setup. So now, in turn, talking about setup, I'm going to use the same gun. This is exactly the same gun that I used throughout this whole process. And this time I'm spraying it right up at 20 PSI, which is like the max that they want you to be at. I have my little test panel board here. Right? So I have my mixture of candy black. And actually, be because we're trying to tint this and have it even, and there are so many little areas and edges that we have to worry about and making sure our passes are consistent, I went up in my ratio. I went up, it's a right about eight to one. So what that's doing is it's actually thinning out the concentration of that candy a little bit more. I would rather have to go back and do an extra coat to maybe make it a little darker than have it too dark and look really mottled or blotchy right in the beginning because I, again, I can't correct that. I'd have to go all the way back to silver and start again and we don't want to do that. So talking about the ratio and my board, what I'm going to do is, and this is a very easy thing for you guys to do, is to test your pattern on your gun. Make sure your, your fan is set properly, you don't have heavy on the top and narrow in the middle, or heavy in the middle and narrow on the top. That'll tell you that your paint is too thick or too thin in viscosity, right? So, really quick, that's my pattern. And it's just a quick pull, you can see, just a nice quick pull and even and it looks consistent throughout that whole fan. What I might encourage you to do if you're not 100% comfortable in spraying candies, you can actually, this is really the only time that I will dial in my fluid control. And what that's doing is limiting my ability to pull back on this needle, right? So you pull this in a little, a couple turns, and you'll see it's still nice and even, but it's not as concentrated. So if you're not comfortable with that or you're worried that you might have a little bit too heavy or too wet of an application, you can essentially nurse it on, but it's still nice and even. So it's, it's kind of like on your airbrush, if you're using an airbrush, you have that little adjustment knob in the back that limits your needle pull. It's the same exact principle with this. So I can spray, and you can see how much longer I was able to be on the trigger, and I still have a nice even pattern, and it's still a little bit lighter than that. So it's allowing this gun to be a little more forgiving. You can do that with any of the guns. So that's just something to keep in mind. And, and anything too, my, my fan control is I go wide open and I just give it about a quarter turn close. That's it. And I always leave my fan that way. And this is, again, the only time that I really do mess with my fluid control. I usually spray with the fluid control wide open. Um, I, I'll turn it in for this or something where you're trying to limit your, your fluid application because this is still going to atomize. You're still spraying at 20 PSI, but it's just going to give you a softer transition. So something to keep in mind if you're doing something like this, again, where we have all these cavities, we have all these edges that you have to be very careful of and cautious where one extra pass is going to start to darken that up and again, it's not going to go away. So it's very critical that it goes on even. So I'm going to get this out of the way. And this is something too, like that board, you don't have to do it on a board, you can have it on a piece of masking paper uh, next to your spray area. You know, if you test your airbrush, if you're testing your spray gun, it's a, it's a very simple and effective way to find out on a piece of paper that you can crumple up and throw away before you do something like this, and now you, you can't start, you can't throw this away, you're gonna start again. So, anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I have my wheel set and ready to go, and I have my center cap as well. We're going to make sure we do this at the same time, just like the rest of the wheels, so everything is consistent, the colors even. And uh, this is going to be coat number one.
Hey guys, coat number one is dry and this is coat number two. Coat number two is dry. This is coat number three. Hey guys, we are back in the booth and we are completely done with this project. I did two coats of uh, 2K clear. Uh, for that, I opted for my PPG EC550. That's my go-to clear if you guys have seen any of the other videos that we do. It is part of their Enviro-based line. It is a clear coat that is designed specifically for water-based and waterborne finishes. We have great results in that, so that's kind of what I recommend. It's my favorite product to, to use over the top of ours for like an automotive type application. So, you can see how good that looks. I'm going to give a little bit of light on here so you can see what that finish looks like. I opted for a fourth coat of our candy black to really push these a little more in the black spectrum, but it has almost a kind of a, a black cherry look, which is actually really cool. It's got that metallic showing through just a little bit, but they're very subtle. Uh, the owner absolutely loves it. It's going to look really good on his car, so he's super stoked about that. Um, but that's where I want to talk about the process, right, and what we did. So. I did a fourth coat of the candy black on there. So we started with a powder coated wheel. So we went through and we really made sure that was scuffed and prepped really good and clean. We finished it in 400 grit and that's a perfect grit to go over with our Autoborn sealer. So we did our 6013 silver sealer. We did two coats of that, get nice even coverage and, and cover everything up, make it nice and even. And remember we did an effect coat with our Cosmic Sparkle Silver and that was just one coat. Very nice, almost not even medium, just a wispy dry kind of control coat over everything to really give that cool effect and, and actually make that metallic a little more subtle. And then we let that dry and we did four coats for this application, four coats of our candy black mixed with our uh, UVLS 4050. So it's six to one was the ratio in that. So it's six parts UVLS to one part candy black. Now that tint strength allows you to kind of vary or, or adjust how dark or how light this is going to be. And that kind of goes in key with what we did when we did that spray out to show you guys the test panel and that board. Um, that's also a good way to, to see what this is going to look like. Doing a test panel, you might want this to be a little bit lighter. So you see a little more of that metallic through the candy and make the metallic pop a little more and not so black. But for this, we wanted these to be really, really rich looking. Uh, but doing a test panel is a great way to let you know what does one coat look like? What does two coats look like? What does three coats look like? Now you can have that as a reference when you're spraying parts or doing an overall project. You, you know exactly what it's going to look like, exactly what to expect. You know exactly where you should be with your ratios in terms of mixing your strength and candies. And, and as far as I'm concerned, you're always better off having a little bit weaker of a concentration of candy and doing an extra coat than starting way too heavy and, and having a problem or just not what you wanted and you have difficulty spraying it in terms of that blotchiness or striping. It's always easier to put one more coat on and make it a little bit darker. And remember with candies, if you start blotchy or stripey or have any kind of problems, that's not going to go away. You're going to see that throughout the whole process. So you kind of have to start again. So we're going to try to get these outside, get one of them outside anyway, get some sunlight so you can see what it looks like in natural daylight. So stick around and we'll see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, we are outside. We just wanted to give you that quick glimpse, see if we could grab some sunlight. And uh, again, like you said, it's, it's a subtle, subtle color, but it is very cool and it's going to look great on that car. So this has been another installment of Base Coat Basics. I'm Chris Arpin, Createx Colors, and we will see you guys next time.